are continuing our series, A Reason to Sing Today. Uh, we've only got a couple of more weeks left. Um, January 7, Adam talked about what it is to sing in community, what it means to sing as a church. Alan last week talked about why we sing at funerals and today I'm talking about why we sing in private, why we sing on our own. How many of you would say that you listen to music every day? That's about 80% of you. How many would you say listen to music once a week? Okay, that's about 1%. How many of you listen to music rarely, like hardly at all, like once a month? Okay, so the majority of us listen to music every day. You like my little survey there? It's going to be very interactive today, by the way. I'm just going to get heads up. I want to test you. I see Max, Max Myers, you're here. Music that you listened to growing up, what was it? Can you remember? What was it? Mainly hymns. Okay, cool. How about you, Mike? You too. Okay. Very good. Very good. Anyone else want to share what music you listened to growing up? John Denver. John Denver. Ah, thanks, Chrissy. Yeah. Black Sabbath and Deep Purple. (laughs) Hey, this is, you know, and you'd probably remember it pretty well, right? See, that's it. I mean, I was nine years old when I listened to ACDC. A song called You Shook Me All Night Long. Does anyone remember that? (laughs) Any ladies remember that song? Yeah, it was definitely a guy who wrote that song. Yeah, think about it. Um, I want to do a little social experiment with you. I'm thinking of a TV ad that was probably 20 to 30 years ago. Okay, so, so, so if you're in Australia 20 or 30 years ago, if you're younger than that, I'm sorry, I'll come back to you in a minute. But I want to see if you remember a TV ad that, we say, that, we, that should be pretty memorable that you probably haven't heard for 20 or 30 years, all right? And it's got a phone number that is the first three lines and you got your line, your part is the last line. I want you to try and remember it. See how good your memory is, all right? goes like this. You ready? I'm going to sing three lines of the phone number and you're going to jump in with the last line if you remember it. Because like this, one three double one double six, one three double one double six, one three double one double six. It's a hot delivery. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> the mind is phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, how long would it have been since you heard that, Martine? 20 years? Not that long. Maybe it's been on TV lately. (laughs) Our minds are are soaking in everything, aren't they? They really are. Uh, uh, Sorry. We talked about music that we remember. And I feel like the music that I grew up with is, is imprinted on my mind. As soon as I hear it, I can recall it really, really quickly. And most music, I don't know whether you notice, is kind of pointed in one of either two directions. It's kind of pointed at somebody or back towards myself. It's either got a direction towards I want to say something to you or I'm saying something about myself. Or it's saying life is a problem or there is hope and there is a solution. It's kind of one or the other. Did you know that our God, the Creator, is a singer? Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. Hopefully it'll appear magically right here. Let me read it to you. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. He's a singer. And because we are made in his image, that means we've got some kind of song going on. Andy talked about that this morning. We've already come across this theme that there is some kind of music within us, some kind of song that, we are, that we've got a chance to connect with or express or be a part of. I'm not saying you should all be a singer, you should all go out and apply for Australian Idol or The Voice. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying you've been given a song to share. I talked about lyrics. Lyrics are so incredibly powerful. And the tongue is important. You know, the words that we use. I'm pretty sure, Alan, it says somewhere in the Bible that the tongue and the words that we use are important. Is that right? Can you confirm? Yes, good. That's good. Some people say you are what you eat. 
the movie You've Got Mail, the character Frank Navasky says, you are what you read. And it kind of, I think it can be extrapolated to you are what you listen to, or you are what you ingest, you are what you sing. And then there's music that gives glory to God. It's almost like it's its own category, isn't it? That music that drives the truth of the Bible into us. Most music is kind of just on this plane of humanity, talking to each other, focusing on the dysfunction that I've been through or that I've experienced, something that's been done to me or something that I've done to someone else. But all of a sudden when the music turns vertical, something pretty special happens. It doesn't have to be a Christian artist or a a person who professes to follow Jesus, but many people are onto it, that our music can turn vertical and, and begin to express something to God. I want to talk today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the story of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts. If you've got your Bible, you want to open to Acts 16, and we're going to be reading from there. To give you a little bit of context about who Paul is, if you've never heard about who Paul is, Paul is a guy that I really like because he's a guy who started off really kind of hating Jesus, and he did lots of dodgy things to Jesus' followers. He was, he was a bit of a rat bag. But along the road to Damascus, as some of you will know, some of you will know, he had an incredible encounter with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit actually blinded him and shook him and, and, and said, why are you doing this to me? I want to be your God and I want you to share my love with others. And so he had a night and day encounter. I feel like that myself. I, had a, I was going this way. I was doing my own thing. I followed whatever I wanted. And then God shook me and said, no, mate, you're coming with me and we're going to do it. And that's, that's who Paul is. And he's trying to live this out. And the context of this story is that he's on a journey. He's walking. They're out just trying to do everything that they can with the gifts that they've been given to share the good news of Jesus with others. And you're going to hear them talk in first person about the things that happen and then you're going to hear the narrator speak. Acts 16, verse 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her her owner's fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept up this up for many days. Can you imagine that? Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit in her, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. Phenomenal stuff. When her owners realised that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When they received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet with the stocks. So Paul and Silas, they're living out what God's called them to do. They're giving it absolute everything. Living living out God's calling is is one of the most challenging parts, isn't it, of following Jesus. Initially, we have some kind of encounter with Him. And like me, maybe God touched your life or, or showed you a revelation of Him and it's thrown your world into a 360, but now you've got this incredible purpose what it is to live out, to follow Jesus, and in some way to share His love for you with others so that others would see it. At least that's the way I interpret what our calling is, if you like. And there's so many different ways of that. We don't all have to be Paul and Silas hitting the road, you know, taking it to the streets. That's not necessarily what He's called us to. We've all got different gifts and talents and skills. As I look out around this congregation and I know the people of this church, I know there's some phenomenal people living out their calling for God. And every time I see every one of you who are doing it, it just takes my breath away. I just think this is amazing. It's so exciting to watch. And it's so encouraging and it's so challenging to me personally as I see others living it out that I want to do this more myself. So back to our story. 
Verse 26. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas are about to be tested because they've found themselves in big trouble for what they're doing. They've created this controversy with the locals and all that God is doing through them and they got beaten so brutally and they're thrown in jail. So now what do they do? Let's read from verse 25 to 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And all at once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. This is pretty amazing, eh? So what did they sing? What did they do? They sang. Two things I want to just quickly flesh out with you. I want to ask you or want to dive into what did they sing and why? Why did they sing? Let's start with what. What kind of song did they choose when they're in their darkest moment, when things are going terribly wrong? Did they choose that unrequited love song to sing to the girl that they love? Did they choose a woe is me, oh, my life's so hard? No, they chose a praise to God. Pretty miraculous, right? And it doesn't really say whether they asked for the miracle it doesn't really say whether they called out to him specifically for something. All, it's, all the text says is they sang praise to God. No hymn book, no TV, no projector on the screen, no Spotify. So they must have been doing this by memory. You remember we talked about instant recall in the start? They must have been doing it by instant recall, just whatever they could remember. They must have been well practised. They must have known. These songs must have been part of what they do. They made it part of it. They do everyday regular practice. They've been already been beaten. And this is the bit I don't get. When you've been beaten that heavily, how you choose to sing, you might say, well, that's all they could do because they're chained up. Let's talk about the why. We can only kind of speculate here because the Bible doesn't say why they sang. Here's what I came up with. Maybe they sang to remember the good things that God has done in the past. You know, Paul had had that night and day experience on the Damascus Road with Jesus. He knows that God's capable of pretty amazing, amazing things. So sometimes singing is to remind us in our private space of the good things that God has done in the past, yeah, to meditate on that. It's so easy to get caught in the trap of going back to our old patterns of what we listen to because it feels good and it feels comfortable. It It reminds us of a good time in life, but... If we engage with worship music that reminds us of how good God is, it gets us on the track of thinking positively about what He's going to do in the future and expecting it. It lifts our whole demeanour. Maybe they sang to remind themselves of the promise that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Check this out. Jesus said, When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This promise doesn't say when and what the reward is going to be. I won't pretend to know what that means. But his promises are true. He's our ultimate backup. And maybe the disciples saying this psalm because they trusted it and they trusted it, Jesus. Psalm 63, because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings because you are my help. Our God is our help in a way that no one else can help. Some of you have experienced that. If you're looking in today and you say, I don't know what you're talking about, Phil, just come and talk to me later. I'd love to engage with you and begin a conversation about that. We're running an alpha course in a few weeks. We would love to begin the discussion about who this guy Jesus is and how he can help you in your life. He is a help like no one else. No one else on this earth. He does things that are beyond our imagination. So come on, band. We're going to sing. I want to encourage you, church, to sing in to praise to God in private, to remind you of God's goodness. Sing praise to God in private, to remind you of God's promises to you. Sing praise to God in private when it's all going well. Sing praise to God in private when it's all falling apart. 
sing praise to God in private. When you're in trouble and when you're in tough times, sing praise to God in private to rely more on the one from whom your best help comes from. And sing praise to God in private to build your relationship with the one, the one, the creator of you and me who's actually singing over you. He's singing over you. Sing back to Him in your private space. Make it a joy. Let it well up inside you each day. Encourage you in every moment that you need Him. He's going to be there for you in ways that you can't even beyond hope or imagine. So let's pray together. Will you stand to your feet, everyone, as we pray? Would you close your eyes with me? God, we just reach out to you this morning. We thank you that you're our help beyond every other help. For those in this room that need your help this morning, we just pray over them right now. If that's you this morning, you just want to put your hand up and say, yes, please, Phil, pray for me. Then just do that in this place. Yeah, look at all these hands. Yeah, God, we just ask for your help to come upon these who need your help this morning, God. Whatever their, whatever their need may be, we ask by your Holy Spirit that you would help them in this time. And for us who are trying to live out the calling, God, that you've got for us, maybe you'd like me to pray for you this morning. Maybe you just want to pop your hand up and say, yeah, God, I just want to live out the calling that you've got for me. Maybe just pop your hand up and I'll pray for you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we invite you to inspire and encourage those who've got their hands raised right now to, to give more of your Holy Spirit into their lives, to li- for them to know what it is, the wisdom that they need to live out what they've, you've called them to do and for the strength to do it. That they would be able to one day stand before you and say, and hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. You lived it out as I wanted you to do. Would you fill them today? Would you give them overflow of your spirit and your peace and your blessing in Jesus' name? And for anyone here this morning who may want to just say, I I don't know who this Jesus guy is, Phil. I just want to say maybe I'd like to investigate him. Would you pop your hand up if that's you? If you'd like to explore who Jesus is, it would be my absolute joy to begin journeying with you. Yeah. There's a hand in this place. Heavenly Father, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to touch whoever's put their hand up for that this morning. And we ask that you would lead them into relationship with you. We ask that you would touch their life. We ask that you would show them how good you are and the reward that you have for them in some way that is beyond our hope or understanding. So Jesus, have your way. Amen. Amen.